Once, an engine attached to a train was afraid of a few drops of rain. It went into a tunnel and squeaked through its funnel and wouldn't come out again. The engine's name is Henry. His driver and fireman argued with him, but he would not move. The rain will spoil my lovely green paint and red stripes, he said. The guard blew his whistle till he had no more breath and waved his flag till his arms ached. But Henry still stayed in the tunnel and blew steam at him. I'm not going to spoil my lovely green paint and red stripes for you. Then along came Sir Topham Hatt, the man in charge of all the engines on Sodor. They call him the Fat Controller. We will pull you out, said the Fat Controller, but Henry only blew steam at him. Everyone pulled except the Fat Controller, because, <coughs> he said, my doctor has forbidden me to pull. But still Henry stayed in the tunnel. Then they tried pushing from the other end. The Fat Controller said, one, two, three, push. <laughs> but he didn't help. <coughs> My doctor has forbidden me to push. Hospital tested, clinically proven bullshit. <laughs> but bullshit nonetheless, he said. They pushed and pushed and pushed, but still Henry stayed in the tunnel. At last, Thomas came along. The guard waved his red flag and stopped him. Everyone argued with Henry. Look, it has stopped raining, they said. Yes, but it will begin again soon, said Henry. And what would become of my green paint with red stripes then? Thomas pushed and puffed and pushed as hard as ever he could. But still Henry stayed in the tunnel. Eventually, even the fat controller gave up. We shall take away your rails, he said, and leave you here for always and always and always. They took up the old rails and built a wall in front of him so that Henry couldn't get out of the tunnel anymore. All he could do was watch the trains rushing through the other tunnel. He was very sad because he thought no one would ever see his lovely green paint with red stripes again. As time went on, Edward and Gordon would often pass by. Edward would say, peep, peep, hello. And Gordon would say, poop, 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 serves you right. Poor Henry had no steam to answer. His fire had gone out. Sutton dirt from the tunnel had spoiled his lovely green paint and red stripes anyway. He wondered if he would ever be allowed to pull trains again. But I think he deserved his punishment. Don't you? Poor Henry had no steam to answer. His fire had gone out. Thomas is a tank engine who lives at a big station on the island of Sodor. He's a cheeky little engine with six small wheels, a short stumpy funnel, a short stumpy boiler, and a short stumpy dome.
fussy little engine, too, always pulling coaches to about take on long journeys. And when trains come in, he pulls the empty coaches away. So Thomas thinks no engine works as hard as he does, including Gordon, the biggest and proudest engine of all. Thomas likes to tease Gordon with his whistle. Wake up, lazy bones. Why don't you work hard like me? One day, after pulling the big express, Gordon had arrived back at the sidings very tired. He was just going to sleep when Thomas came up in his cheeky way. Wake up, lazy bones. Do some hard work for a change. You can't catch me. And off he ran, laughing. Instead of going to sleep again, Gordon thought how he could get back at Thomas. One morning, Thomas wouldn't wake up. His driver and fireman couldn't make him start. His fire went out and there was not enough steam. It was nearly time for the express. People were waiting, but the coaches weren't ready. At last, Thomas started. Oh dear, oh dear, he yawned. He fussed into the station where Gordon was waiting. Hurry up, you, said Gordon. Hurry up yourself, replied Thomas. Gordon, the proud engine, began making his plan to teach Thomas a lesson for teasing him. Almost before the coaches had stopped moving, Gordon reversed quickly and was coupled to the train. Get in quickly, please, he whistled. Thomas usually pushed behind the big trains to help them start, but he was always uncoupled first. This time, Gordon started so quickly they forgot to uncouple Thomas. Gordon's chance had come. puffed Gordon to the coaches. The train went faster and faster. Too fast for Thomas. He wanted to stop, but he couldn't. Beep, beep, stop. Be gone. For the love of God, Montresor. Yes, I said. For the love of God. But to these words I hearkened in vain for a reply. I grew impatient. I called aloud. Fortunato. No answer. I called. Laughed Gordon. You can't get away, you can't get away, laughed the coaches. Poor Thomas was going faster than he had ever gone before. He was out of breath and his wheels hurt him, but he had to go on. I shall never be the same again, he thought sadly. My wheels will be quite worn out. At last, they stopped at a station. Thomas was uncoupled, and he felt very silly and exhausted. Next, he went onto a turntable, thinking of everyone laughing at him. And then he ran onto a siding out of the way. Well, little Thomas, chuckled Gordon, now you know what hard work means, don't you? Poor Thomas couldn't answer. He had no breath. He just puffed slowly away to rest and had a long, long drink. Maybe I don't have to tease Gordon to feel important, Thomas thought to himself, and he puffed slowly home. Gordon always pulled the big express. He was proud of being the only engine strong enough to do so. It was full of important people, like the fat controller, and Gordon was seeing how fast he could go. Hurry, 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 he said. Trickety talk, trickety talk, trickety talk, said the coaches. In a minute, Gordon would see the tunnel where Henry stood bricked up and lonely. Oh dear, thought Henry, why did I worry about rain spoiling my lovely coat of paint? Will the fat controller ever forgive me and let me out again? 
I'm going to poop poop at Henry, said Gordon. He was almost there when... And there was Gordon going slower and slower in a cloud of steam. His driver stopped the train. What has happened to me? asked Gordon. I feel so weak. You've burst your safety valve, said the driver. You can't pull the train anymore. Oh dear, said Gordon. We were going so nicely too. And look, there's Henry laughing at me. Everyone came to see Gordon. Huh, said the fat controller. I never liked these big engines. Always going wrong. Send for another engine at once. While the guard went to find one, they uncoupled Gordon, who had enough puff to slink onto the siding out of the way. Edward was the only engine left. I'll come and try, he said. said Gordon. That's no use. Edward can't push the train. Edward puffed and pushed and pushed and puffed. But he said Edward and... You've done it, hooray! Leaned out of the window to wave at Edward Nast that his hat blew off into a field where a goat ate it for tea. Thank you. Thomas the tank engine was rumbling to the other engines. I spend my time pulling coaches about ready for you to take out on journeys. The other engines laughed. <laughs> Why can't I pull passenger trains too? You're too impatient, they said. You'd be sure to leave something behind. Rubbish, said Thomas. I'll show you. Thomas ran to find the coaches. Come along, come along, he fussed. There's plenty of time, there's plenty of time, they grumbled. Thomas took them to the platform and wanted to run round in front at once. But his driver wouldn't let him. Don't be impatient, Thomas. Thomas waited and waited. The people got in, the guard and station master walked up and down, the porter banged the doors, and still Henry didn't come. Thomas got more and more excited. The fat controller came to see what was the matter, and the guard and the station master told him about Henry. Find another engine, he ordered. There's only Thomas, they said. You'll have to do it then, Thomas. Be quick now. So Thomas ran round to the front and back down on the coaches ready to start. Don't be impatient, said his driver. Wait till everything is ready. But Thomas was too excited to listen. What happened then, no one knows. Perhaps they forgot to couple Thomas to the train. Or perhaps the driver pulled the lever by mistake. Anyhow, Thomas started. As he passed the first signal box, men waved and shouted. Then he came to a signal at danger. Bother, he thought. I must stop and I was going so nicely too. What a nuisance signals are. He blew an angry peep peep on his whistle. The signalman ran up. Hello, Thomas, he said. What are you doing here? I'm pulling a train, said Thomas. Can't you see? Where are your coaches, then? Thomas looked back. Why, bless me, he said, if we haven't left them behind. Yes, said the signalman. You'd better go back quickly and fetch them. Poor Thomas was so sad he nearly cried. Cheer up, said his driver. Let's go back quickly and try again. the station all the passengers were talking at once they were telling the fat controller what a bad railway it was but when Thomas came back they saw how sad he was and couldn't be cross he was coupled to the train and this time he really pulled it but for a long time afterwards the other engines laughed at Thomas Thank <laughs> you.
Thomas the tank engine wouldn't stop being a nuisance. Night after night he kept the other engines awake. I'm tired of pushing coaches. I want to see the world. For Thomas was a little engine with a long tongue. But one night, Edward came to the shed. He was a kind little engine and felt sorry for Thomas. I've got some trucks to take home tomorrow. If you take them instead of me, I'll push coaches in the yard. Thank you, said Thomas. That will be nice. Thomas ran off happily to find trucks. Now, trucks are silly and noisy. They talk a lot and don't attend to what they are doing. And I'm sorry to say they play tricks on an engine who is not used to them. Edward knew all about trucks. He warned Thomas to be careful, but Thomas was too excited to listen. The shunter fastened the coupling, and when the signal dropped, Thomas was ready. The guard blew his whistle. Peep, peep, answered Thomas, and started off. But the trucks weren't ready. Oh, 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 they screamed. Wait, Thomas, wait. But Thomas wouldn't wait. Come on, come on, he puffed. All right, all right, don't fuss, all right, don't fuss, grumbled the trucks. Thomas began going faster and faster. Whee! He whistled as he rushed through Henry's tunnel. <laughs> hurry, hurry, called Thomas. He was feeling very proud of himself, but the trucks grew crosser and crosser. At last, Thomas slowed down as he came to Gordon's Hill. Steady now, steady, warned the driver as they reached the top. He began to put on the brakes. We're stopping, we're stopping, called Thomas. No, 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 answered the trucks bumping into each other. Go on, go on. Before the driver could stop them, they had pushed Thomas down the hill and were rattling and laughing behind him. Poor Thomas tried hard to stop them from making him go too fast. Stop pushing, stop pushing, he hissed, but the trucks took no notice. Go on, go on, they giggled in their silly way. There's the station. Oh dear, what shall I do? He cried. He rattled straight through and swerved into the good yard. Every day, the fat controller came to the station to catch his train. Hello, he always said to Thomas. Remember, don't be impatient, Thomas. You can never be as strong and fast as Gordon, but you can be a really useful engine. Don't let the silly trucks tease you. There were lots of trucks, and Thomas worked very hard pushing and pulling them into place. There was also a small coach and two strange things his driver called cranes. That's the breakdown train, he told Thomas. The cranes are for lifting heavy things like engines and coaches and trucks. One day, Thomas was in the yard. Suddenly, he heard an engine whistling, help, help. A goods train came rushing through much too fast. The engine was James, and he was frightened. His brake blocks were on fire. They're pushing me, they're pushing me, he panted. On, 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 laughed the trucks. Still whistling, help, help, poor James disappeared. I'd like to teach those trucks a lesson, said Thomas the tank engine. Soon came the alarm. James is off the line, the breakdown train, quickly. Thomas was coupled on and off they went.
Thomas worked his hardest. Hurry, 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 he puffed. He wasn't pretending to be like Gordon. He really meant it. Bother those trucks and their tricks. I hope poor James isn't hurt. James's driver and fireman were feeling him all over to see if he was hurt. Never mind, James, they said. It wasn't your fault. It was those wooden brakes they gave you. We always said they were no good. Thomas pushed the breakdown train alongside. Then he pulled the unhurt trucks out of the way. Oh dear, oh dear, they groaned. Serves you right, serves you right, puffed Thomas. He was hard at work puffing backwards and forwards all afternoon. This'll teach you a lesson, this'll teach you a lesson, he told the trucks. And they answered, yes it will, yes it will. They left the broken trucks, then with two cranes they put James back on the rails. He tried to move, but he couldn't, so Thomas helped him back to the shed. The fat controller was waiting anxiously for them. Well, Thomas, he said, I've heard all about it and I'm very pleased with you. You're a really useful engine. James shall have some proper brakes and a new coat of paint. And you shall have a branch line all to yourself. Oh, thank you, sir, said Thomas. Now Thomas is as happy as can be. He has a branch line and two coaches called Annie and Clarabel. He puffs proudly backwards and forwards with them all day. Gordon is always in a hurry, but never forgets to say poop poop, and Thomas always whistles peep peep in return. Gordon were alone with James. Although the fat controller was beginning to think well of him, whenever a chance came, the other engines would talk of nothing but bootlaces. Remember the time one had to be used to get you out of trouble, James, they would tease. James tried to get his own back, talking about engines who got shut up in tunnels and stuck on hills, but they wouldn't listen. You talk too much, little James, said Gordon. A fine, strong engine like me has something to talk about. I'm the only engine who can pull the express. When I'm not there, they need two engines. Think of that. I've pulled expresses for years and have never once lost my way. I seem to know the right line by instinct. Every wise engine knows, of course, that the signalman works the points to make engines, but Gordon was so proud he had forgotten. Wake up, Gordon, next morning. It's nearly time for the express. What are you doing? Odd jobs? Oh, well, we all have to begin somewhere, don't we? Run along now and get my coaches. Don't be late. James went to get Gordon's coaches. They were all shining with lovely new paint. He was careful not to bump them, and they followed him smoothly into the station, singing happily, We're going away, we're going away. I wish I was going with you, said James. I should love to pull the express and go flying along the line. Gordon, with much noise and blowing of steam, got ready to back onto the train. That controller was on the train with other important people, and as soon as they heard the guards whistle, Gordon started. Look at me now, look at me now, he puffed, and the coaches glided after him. Poop, 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 poop. Goodbye, little James, see you tomorrow. James watched the train disappear and then went back to work. He pushed some trucks into their proper sidings, 
and went to fetch the coaches for another train. James had just brought the coaches to the platform when he heard a mournful noise. There was Gordon trying to sidle into the station without being noticed. Hello, Gordon. Is it tomorrow? Gordon didn't answer. He just let off steam feebly. Did you lose your way, Gordon? Thomas, the tank engine, is very proud of his branch line. He thinks it's the most important part of the whole railway. His two coaches, Annie and Clarabelle, agree with him. Annie can only take passengers, but Clarabelle can take passengers, luggage and the guard. They are both old and need new paint, but Thomas loves them very much. As they run backwards and forwards along the line, they sing songs to each other. When Thomas starts from a station, he sings, Oh, come along, we're rather late. Oh, come along, we're rather late. And the coaches sing, We're coming along, we're coming along. They don't mind what Thomas says to them, because they know he is trying to please the fat controller. And they know, too, that if Thomas is cross, he's not cross with them. One day, they had to wait for which made Thomas very cross. How can I run my line properly if he was late? He doesn't realize that the fat controller depends on me. Thomas whistled impatiently. He wanted to leave, but... Where have you been, lazy bones? asked Thomas. The guard blew his whistle and Thomas started so quickly that he left him behind. The guard waved his red flag to stop Thomas, but he was well on his way steaming out of the station. Come along, come along, puffed Thomas. But Clarabelle didn't want to come. I've lost my nice guard. I've lost my nice guard, she sobbed. Annie tried to tell Thomas what had happened. We haven't a guard. We haven't a guard. But he was hurrying and wouldn't listen. Annie and Clarabelle tried to put on their brakes, but they couldn't without the guard. Where is our guard? Where is our guard? They cried. But Thomas didn't stop till they came to a signal. Bother that signal, said Thomas. What's the matter? I don't know, said his driver. The guard will tell us in a minute. They waited and waited, but the guard didn't come. Peep, 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 peep. Where is the guard, whistled Thomas. We've left him behind, sobbed Annie and Clarabelle together. Everyone looked. And there was the guard running as fast as he could along the line, with his flags in one hand and his whistle in the other. He was very hot, so he had a drink. Then told them all about it. I'm very sorry, Mr. Guard, said Thomas. It wasn't fault, Thomas, he replied. Look, the signal is down. We can go. Let's make up for lost time. Annie and Clarabelle were so pleased to have their guard again that they sang, as fast as you like, as fast as you like, to Thomas all the way. They reached the end of the line quicker than ever before. Gordon were lonely when Thomas left the yard to run his branch line. They didn't like that. 
James grumbled too. We get your lazy and slack, they answered. Altogether, the engines were causing the fat controller a great deal of trouble. Stations at both ends of the line each have a turntable. The fat can turn round because it is dangerous for them to go fast backwards. Tank engines like Thomas don't need turntables. They can go just as well backwards as forwards. But to hear Gordon talk, you would have thought that the fat controller had given him a tender just to show how important he was. You don't understand, little Thomas. We tender engines have a position to keep up. It doesn't matter where you go, but we are important. And for the fat controller to make us shunt trucks, fetch coaches, and go on some of those dirty sidings, it's, it's, well, it's not the proper thing. Thomas chuckled and went off with Amy and Clarabel. Disgraceful, Gordon hissed as he ran backwards to the turntable. The turntable was in a windy place close to the sea, and if he was not on it just right, he put it out of balance and made it difficult to turn. Today, Gordon was in a bad temper, and the wind was blowing fiercely. His driver tried to make him stop in the right place, but Gordon wasn't trying. The fireman tried to turn the handle, but Gordon's weight and the strong wind prevented him. It's no good, they said at last. Your tender upsets the balance. If you were a nice tank engine, you'd be all right. Now you'll have to pull the next train backwards. Look, call some boys. There's a new tank engine. Oh, it's only Gordon back to front. Hello, call Thomas. Playing tank engines? Sensible engine. Take my advice, scrap your tender and have a nice bunker. Gordon said nothing. Even James laughed when he saw him. Take care, hissed Gordon, you might stick too. No fear, chuckled James, I'm not so fat as you. I mustn't stick, thought James. He stopped on just the right place to balance the table. It could now swing easily. Gordon arrived in time to see everything. James turned much too easily. The wind puffed him round like a top. He couldn't stop. Well, well, said Gordon. Are you playing roundabouts? Poor James, feeling quite giddy, rolled off to the shed without a word. Shameful to treat tender engines like this. Gordon has to go backwards and people think he's a tank engine. James spins round like a top and everyone laughs at us. And to add to that, the fat controller makes us all shunt in dirty sidings. Blech. Listen, said Gordon. He whispered something to the others. We'll do it tomorrow. The fat controller will look silly. The engines had decided to go on strike. The fat controller sat in his office listening to the noise outside. The passengers were angry. The station master came in. There's trouble in the shed, sir. Henry is sulking, there's no train, and the passengers are saying this is a bad railway. Indeed, said the fat controller, we cannot. He found Gordon, James, and he won't shunt like common tank engines. That was Thomas's job. We are important tender engines. You fetch our coaches and we will pull them. Tender engines don't shunt. Oh, indeed, said the fat controller, we'll see about that. Engines on my railway do as they are told and he hurried away to find Edward. The yard has never been the same since Thomas left to run his branch line, he thought sadly. Edward was shunting. Leave those trucks, please, Edward, said the fat controller. I want you to push coaches for me in the yard. Thank you, sir, that will be a nice change. 
That's a good engine. Off you go, then. Edward found coaches for the three engines, and that day the trains ran as usual. But next morning, Edward looked unhappy. Gordon came clanking past, hissing rudely. Bless me, said the fat controller. What a noise. They all hiss me, sir, answered Edward. They say tender engines don't shunt, and last night they said I have black wheels. I haven't, have I, sir? No, Edward, you have nice blue ones, and I'm proud of you. Tender engines do shunt. But all the same, we do need another tank engine here. He went to a workshop and they showed him all sorts of engines. At last he saw a smart little green engine with four wheels. That's the one, he thought. If I choose you, will you work hard? Oh, sir, yes, sir. That's a good engine. I'll call you Percy. Yes, sir, thank you, sir, said Percy. And the fat controller brought him back to the yard. Edward? He called, here's Percy, will you show him everything? Percy soon learned what he had to do, and they had a happy afternoon. Next morning, Thomas arrived. The fat controller sent for me. I expect he wants help, he said to Edward. Shh, here he comes, replied Edward. Well done, Thomas. You've been quick. Listen, Gordon and James are sulking. They say they won't shunt like common tank engines. So I have shut them up and I want you both to run the line for a while. Common tank engines indeed, snorted Thomas. We'll show them. And Percy will help too. Oh, sir, yes, sir, please, sir, answered Percy. Edward and Thomas worked the main line, greeting each other as they passed by. Percy puffed along the branch line. Thomas was anxious about Annie and Claribel, but both driver and guard promised to take care of them. There were fewer trains, but the passengers didn't mind. They knew the three other engines were having a lesson. Gordon, James and were cold, lonely and miserable. They wished now they hadn't been so silly. James and Gordon were miserable. They had been shut up for several days for being naughty and long to be let out again. At last, the fat controller arrived. I hope you are sorry, he said, and understand that you are not so important after all. We have a new tank engine called Percy, who helps pull coaches, and Thomas and Edward have worked the main line nicely. But I will let you out now if you promise to be good. Yes, sir, said the three engines, we will. That's right, but please remember that this no-shunting nonsense must stop. That they could go and play on the branch line for a few days. And they ran off happily to find Annie and Claribel at the junction. The two coaches were so pleased to see Thomas again. Edward and Percy played with trucks. Stop, 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 screamed the trucks as they were pushed into their proper sidings. But the two engines laughed and went on shunting till the trucks were tidily arranged. Next, Edward took some empty trucks to the quarry. Percy was left. After a great deal of shunting, Percy was waiting for the signalman to set the point so that he could get back to the yard. He was eager to work, but was being rather careless and not paying attention. Edward had warned Percy, be careful on the main line, whistle to the signalman, you are there. But Percy didn't remember to whistle, so the busy signalman forgot him. Percy waited and waited. The points were still against him, so he couldn't move. Then he looked along the main line. He whistled in horror, for rushing straight towards him was Gordon with the express. Oh, groaned Gordon, get out of my way. Uh, 
Percy opened his eyes. Gordon had stopped with Percy's buffers a few inches from his own. But Percy had begun to move. I won't stay here. I'll run away, he puffed. He went straight through Edward's station and was so frightened that he ran right up Gordon's hill without stopping. After that, he was tired, but he couldn't stop. He had no driver to shut off steam and apply the brakes. I want to stop, I want to stop, he puffed. The man in the signal box saw Percy was in trouble, so kindly set the points. Percy puffed wearily onto a nice empty siding, ending in a big bank of earth. He was too tired now to care where he went. I want to stop. I want to stop. I have stopped, he puffed thankfully. Never mind, Percy, said the workman as they dug him out. You shall have a drink and some coal and then you'll feel better. Presently, Gordon arrived. Well done, Percy. You started so quickly that you stopped a nasty accident. I'm sorry I was cheeky, said Percy. You were clever to stop. Then Gordon helped pull Percy out from the bank. Percy is still cheeky because he has that sort of engine, but he is always most careful when he goes on the main line. I suffered dreadfully and no one cares. Rubbish, snorted James. You don't work hard enough. Fireboxes. It's expensive, said the fat controller, but... They carefully made his fire, putting large lumps of coal like a wall round the outside. Then the glowing middle part was covered with smaller lumps. How are you? Have you a good fire driver? Never better, sir, and plenty of steam. They arrived early at the station. Thomas puffed in. Where have you been? Oh, I can't wait for dawdling tank engines like you. Goodbye. <laughs> Whoosh, said Thomas to Annie and Clarabel. Have you ever seen anything like it? Both Annie and Clarabel agreed that they never had. The guard pulled out his watch. The kipper's due, he said. Who cares, said the fireman, this is good cocoa. The driver got up, come on, fireman, back to our engine. Hey, the fireman grumbled, I haven't finished my cocoa yet. Gordon was cross. Of a new shape, he grumbled. A shape good enough for me is good enough for him. He goes gallivanting off to crew, leaving us to do his work, and comes back saying how happy he feels. It's disgraceful. Who the fuck starts a conversation like that? I... Oh, never mind, whispered Percy. I'm glad you're home again. It sounds like Gordon, said Edward, and it ought to be Gordon. But Gordon never whistles like that. It was Gordon. He came rushing down the hill at a tremendous rate, and he didn't look at Edward. He screamed straight through the station and disappeared. Well, said Edward. <laughs> Meanwhile, Gordon screeched along the line. The noise was awful. At the station, everyone held their ears. The Gordon puffed sadly away, but he wouldn't stop whistling until two fitters climbed up and knocked his whistle valve in place. That night, Gordon slunk into the shed. He was glad it was empty. 
Gordon was resting in a siding. Sometimes, he thought, it's really tiring to be such a large and splendid engine. One does have to keep up appearances so. What cheeks, muttered Gordon. That a special train's coming and where to pull it? Is it coaches or trucks? Trucks, said his driver. Trucks, said Gordon. Puh! Gordon's fire was slow to start, so Edward had to push Gordon to the turntable to get him facing the right way. I won't go, I won't go, grumbled Gordon. Don't be silly, don't be silly, puffed Edward. At last Gordon was on the turntable. The movement had shaken his fire, it was now burning nicely and making steam. Gordon was cross and didn't care what he did. He waited till the table was halfway round. I'll show them, I'll show them, he hissed. He moved slowly forward to jam the table, but he couldn't stop himself and slithered into a ditch. Ooh, she hissed. Get me out! Get me out! Not a hope, said his driver and fireman. You're stuck, you silly great engine. Don't you understand that? They telephoned the fat controller. So Gordon didn't want to take the special train and ran into a ditch. What's that you say? The special's waiting. Tell Edward to take it, please. And Gordon? Oh, leave him where he is. We haven't time to bother with him now. <laughs> On the other side of the ditch, some little boys were chattering. Coo, doesn't he look silly? They'll never get him out. They began to sing. Silly old Gordon fell in a ditch, fell in a ditch, fell in a ditch. Silly old Gordon fell in a ditch all on a Monday morning. Gordon lay in the ditch all day. Oh dear, he thought, I shall never get out. But that evening they lifted Gordon and made a road of sleepers under his wheels to keep him from the mud. Strong ropes were fastened to his back end and James and pulling hard managed to bring him to safety. Late that night, Gordon crawled home, a sadder and wiser engine. It was Christmas on the island of Sodor. All the engines were working hard. Thomas and Toby were busy carrying people and parcels up and down the branch line. Everyone was happy. Only the coaches, Annie and Clarabel, were complaining. It's always the same before Christmas, they groaned. We feel so full, we feel so full. Oh, come on, said Thomas. Where's your festive spirit? Christmas Day is almost here. By the side of the track was a lonely little cottage with a familiar figure waving to them. It's Mrs. Kindly, whistled Thomas. Peep, peep, happy Christmas. Thomas always felt better for seeing her. Christmas just wouldn't be Christmas without Mrs. Kindly. Never mind that, replied Thomas. I've something important to say. Do you realize it's a whole year since Mrs. Kindly saved us from a nasty accident? You remember when she was ill in bed and... Yes, of course, interrupted Edward. You told us how she waved her red dressing gown out of her window to warn you about a landslide ahead. And you and Toby gave her presents, Percy joined in. And the fat controller sent her to Bournemouth to get better. But, said James, the rest of us have never thanked her properly. Exactly, said Thomas. So now I think we should all give her a special Christmas party. Everyone was getting very excited, and the drivers felt sure that the fat controller would agree, as indeed he did. The engines were all busy making plans when silence fell. 
the fat controller had bad news. The weather's changed badly. Mrs. Kindly is snowed up. Toby says he'll help to rescue her. You must help too, Thomas. There's no party unless you do. Thomas hated snow, but he said bravely, I'll try, sir. We must rescue her. We must. There's a good engine. You and Toby will manage splendidly. Thomas charged the snowdrifts fiercely. Sometimes he swept them aside. Sometimes they stuck fast and the men had to loosen them. But at the cutting near the cottage, they could go no further. Look at that, exclaimed Thomas's fireman. Peep, peep, peep. Here we are, whistled Thomas. An answering wave came from an upstairs window. Then they heard a familiar sound. That's Terence, said Thomas. He's come to help too. Sure enough, Terence had a snowplow and was working hard to clear a path to the railway line and safety. At long last, the rescue was complete. Percy took the tired workman home. Terence said goodbye to Mrs. Kindly and promised to take care of her cottage as he watched them all set off. The engines made good time. No more snow had fallen, but the yard was dark. Thomas's heart sank. Suddenly, all the lights went on. What a marvelous sight awaited Mrs. Kindly. Well done, said the fat controller. I'm really proud of you all. Mrs. Kindly especially thanked the smaller engines. Thomas and Toby are old friends, she said. And now, Percy, you are my friend too. Percy was very pleased. Three cheers for Mrs. Kindly, he called. Peep, 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 they all whistled. Thomas the tank engine and his friends thought it was the best Christmas ever and Mrs. Kindly could think of nowhere she would rather live than here with them on the island of Sodor.